welcome back to my channel. And if you're new here, hi, welcome. My name is Zach. I am a makeup artist and medical esthetician based in Toronto, Canada. Today, I am so excited because we are gonna be talking about one of my favorite things as far as the world of beauty, skin health, just generally taking care of your skin, and that is sunscreen. But what type of sunscreen are we talking about? We are gonna be talking about tinted sunscreens. And from my experience, the ones that work best for people like myself with fair to light skin tone. So if you are someone with a deeper skin tone, this might not be the most helpful video, but there will be a few in here that I'm gonna talk about that are too dark for me that might work really well for you. So if that sounds interesting, stay tuned and let's jump into this video. So before I even started the video, I've gone ahead and applied my Can Make Mermaid Skin UV Gel SPF 50 plus PA 4 plus. And generally I will apply a base layer of a regular untinted sunscreen, let that fully dry down then I will go in with one of my tinted SPFs to kind of make up for the days I don't wear makeup. In general, I don't like wearing a tinted sunscreen under a foundation type of product because I feel like I look a little too heavy, too makeup-y, and that's just, that's not my vibe. That's not what I want for my skin. I like to keep makeup bases quite simple for my day-to-day -day life. Now, if I'm creating a video here on YouTube, that's a different story. Nothing's out of the picture. Then. First off, we are gonna talk about all the sunscreens I really, really enjoy, and then we'll talk about the ones where either the tint or the formulation just didn't work well for me. So the first one is the Paula's Choice Super Light Daily Wrinkle Defense Broad Spectrum SPF 30. So this is a tinted all mineral sunscreen. So your mineral, physical or inorganic filters that are the ones that they sit on top of the skin. So that's gonna either be zinc oxide or titanium dioxide. This one is an all zinc oxide based sunscreen. So this one I really love because it's one of the few where the tint is perfection for me. On the back of my hand, I'm gonna do some swatches. Here is a heavy swatch of the Polish Choice Tinted SPF. This is one of the shades I personally love the most. It's gonna be the one I demo for you today. It's just a really, really great tinted mineral sunscreen for people with fair to light skin. And bonus, if you have more neutral to cool undertones, because it tends to have, because this sunscreen does lean slightly cool or slightly pinky red in its undertone. The next sunscreen we're gonna be talking about is another one I really, really love. This is the Neostrata Defend Sheer Physical Protection Sunscreen Broad Spectrum SPF 50 plus PA4 plus. This has the inclusion of titanium oxide and zinc oxide. So both of our more physical protections. This is a very liquidy, you need to shake this up. Here's the Neostrata versus the Polish Choice. As you can see in the undertone, it's slightly, it has a little bit more saturation. It's slightly more kind of a beigey tone versus a more pinky undertone. So this will work better for people with neutral, cool, or warm golden undertones. It's a really, really nice one. It's very light. And if you apply it in a thin layer and build up and let it fully dry down, it dries down to a very nice matte finish. It's quite lightweight on the skin. Australian Gold Botanical Tinted Sunscreen SPF 50. This is another tinted mineral, physical, inorganic sunscreen that it has the inclusion of both titanium dioxide and zinc oxide. So I have the previous iteration of it. Mine is still in date, so I can still definitely use it without worrying about anything being expired. There are now three shades. So there is this one, which they call their fair to light tint. There is also a medium to tan tint, and then there is a dark tint. So three different shade options. When we compare it to the Polish Choice, the Neostrata, this Australian Gold, it tends, it's a little bit more of a warm peach undertones. It's a little bit more of a brighter one. It's a little bit more of a tint that is going to show up on the skin if it's not your perfect match. Now, if you're someone who does wear this under a foundation product, it will be a little bit easier for you to work with. Another thing to take note with the Australian Gold 
sunscreen versus the Neo Strata or Polish Choice that we talked about. The texture is a lot denser. It has more of a whipped, moussey texture. So if you're someone who doesn't like to feel products on the skin, you might find this feels a little too heavy. The next sunscreen we're gonna be talking about is the La Roche-Posay Anthelios Mineral One. SPF 50 plus. I have the shade number one, which depending on where you're shopping at, it will either be called fair or light. This is a nice one. This comes in six different tints and it covers a wide range of skin tone. It's very weighty. You can feel it on the skin. It has more of a texture of like a heavyweight moisturizer or like a night cream if you think about it in the density of product. This is a great option. I would say for someone with normal to dry skin, or for someone who likes a foundation type product that's going to give you a medium to full coverage but you want something in a sunscreen product this is not really well suited for people who have more normal to oily skin or people who like products that feel very lightweight on the skin this is definitely more of a weighty product that you will feel on the skin Polish Choice Neostrata Australian Gold La Roche Posay. You can see this one has more of a neutral to cool pinky undertone. Compared to the other ones, before it dries down, it has less of a saturation on the undertone, which means it's not gonna pull too pink, too yellow. That's what kind of puts it in at more of a neutral undertone. As it does dry down, it does get a little bit darker. Most products that are liquid base, once they sit on top of the skin and dry down and oxidize, meaning they oxidize from contact with air or from the oil or sebum on your skin, they will darken up a little bit. For me, it just feels a little too heavy on the skin and I don't reach for it because I can feel it on my skin. And I don't like that I look really greasy with this product within an hour or two of having it on. So if you have drier skin than I do and you like more coverage in a product than I do, you might really enjoy this. The Strivectin Full Screen, 100% mineral sunscreen. This has an SPF 30 with a vanishing tint. Keep that in mind. It's far too dark for me. This has a more neutral, warm undertone. For me, I find this shade runs quite kind of orangey on my skin. So, so even over the summer when I used a fake tanner, it still looked too dark and too orangey for me. So, if you have someone with a darker, warmer skin tone than I do, you might really enjoy this. For me, I'm gonna end up passing this along to one of my friends who I think will enjoy it a little bit more than I do. The Supergoop Glow Screen SPF 40. This is a chemical or organic filter sunscreen. This has the inclusion of avabenzone, octosalate, and octocrylene. It's been around in the US for a little while now. It just recently launched this year in Canada, so I was super eager to get my hands on it. It's a little bit lighter than the Strivectin, but the undertone is warmer and more of a golden undertone. So for me, I can get away using it almost as like a corrector under foundation products, but if I try to use it around my eyes, this does sting around the eyes. And the kind of more shiny, reflective quality that the sunscreen has, I find around my eyes or anywhere or like the sides of my nose where I have enlarged pores or unwanted skin texture, it can emphasize that. So for me, it wasn't the best sunscreen. I have a girlfriend who really wants to try it out, so I'm gonna give it to her. Super Goop Bright Eyed SPF 40. This has the inclusion of zinc oxide. This is a nice one. It's been out in the US for a little bit, I believe, but within the last two, possibly three months, it launched here in Canada at Sephora, and I was very eager to try it because an all mineral sunscreen that I could use around the eyes that wasn't as expensive as the other one, great. When I blend it out, you can see it's definitely lighter and brighter than my skin tone. So if you're someone with more blue purple under the eyes, this undertone will work well for you. But if you're someone with a darker kind of under eye area and you want to brighten it up, but it tends to have more of a kind of olivey green or brown undertone, you might find a shade like this makes that area look almost kind of 
grayed out or it has like a lavendery blue undertone instead of being more neutralized it kind of enhances it rather than diminishing it so you would need something a little bit richer in undertone like the next product we're going to talk about for the super group i really enjoy it i find it's very hydrating around the eye area but if you're someone with an oily eye area or if you're someone who has a skin tone that is darker than fair to light i don't feel like you'll really enjoy that one our final product is going to be the Color Science Total Eye 3 in 1 Renewal Therapy with an SPF of 35. This is a mineral, physical, inorganic sunscreen filter with the inclusion of zinc oxide and titanium dioxide. Mine actually expires next month because this is the previous formula. In the last year or so, it has been reformulated to where it's now offered in three shades. So I believe you have fair medium which used to be the only shade it came in and then a dark and possibly even one up from that for me this medium or original shade is too dark for me when i got this it was the only shade they had available and i was so excited but the shade's too dark for me so i didn't use it a lot but when you remove the cap you have this nice kind of stainless steel applicator which is wonderful if you have really puffy eyes because the cooling sensation can really help to contract some of those blood vessels under the eyes and really kind of temporarily create a nice smoothing effect as well as the shape of the applicator you can really kind of get into the area and hug so a great little aesthetics trick nothing to do with sunscreen but if you start at this outside corner of your eye hold on, i'm just kind of looking at the mirror behind you so so if you start at this outside corner, slowly go under and hold right here, you have a drainage point. So any of the fluids that accumulate under the eye, you can kind of temporarily drain them and make the eye area look a little bit smoother, less puffy. You don't need this to do it. You can easily do it with your finger or one of my favorite tools, a cold spoon will do wonders for you. So with this color, this is the original shade or what is now known as medium. Here's the super group. Here is the color science. I believe here in Canada, this one, the, the super group retails for 30 to 40. I can only find this, I think it's at skin store here in Canada, but this is like $96. This is a very expensive sunscreen product. And I find one, the color is way too dark for me, even as a corrector under my eyes. I then have to follow up with more of a full coverage makeup product to then counteract the unwanted orangey tone that I got from the sunscreen product. And it's it's nice. It definitely offers more coverage than the Super Goop, but for me, sometimes I felt like this was too much coverage. If you're someone who wants a lighter application, you might find you need to apply this in two or three thin layers. So you get coverage, you get adequate sun protection, but it doesn't look heavy and cakey. So now I'm gonna show you how I apply a tinted sunscreen. I'm gonna start with the Super Goop Bright Eyed Sunscreen, and I'm only going to apply this on half of my face. So I'll take a small dot on my ring finger, and then I'm just going to go under my eye. I tend to like to dot it around, and then I'll pat it, pull some to my upper eyelid, and then work that around. So for me, as someone who wears a base layer of sunscreen on my face, as well as around my eyes, that's all I would apply. If you're someone who's using a tinted sunscreen as your only layer, you might need to do two, possibly three layers. So I'm gonna apply another layer to show you what this would look like if, you're, if it's your only sunscreen. Here are two layers of the Super Goop Bright Eye Sunscreen applied to my right area. So one side with, one side without. What's your preference? So when I look in my mirror, I can definitely see where these colorations around my eyes are evened out. And I can see where this eye area looks brighter. It just looks fresher. I need to blend a little bit more. However, if I just went out like this, I feel like this eye area is too bright, so it almost looks like something is off. It's now too bright for the rest of my skin, so I feel like I need to wear some type of coverage on the rest of my skin just to make things look a little bit more balanced. 
But now I like to apply a tinted sunscreen on the rest of my face. I'm gonna be using the Polish Choice Super Light Daily Wrinkled Fence SPF 30. I like to give it a really good shake. And I'm gonna apply this in two layers as if it's my only sunscreen. So I take a generous amount and I like to dot it around. I apply a tinted sunscreen much like I would a foundation product. So I'll take a little bit and build up as needed. So here's one side. So one thin layer, how I would normally wear it over a untinted sunscreen base versus one side without. Not a ton of coverage, just a little bit. So now I'm gonna apply a second layer. So here are two layers of that Polish Choice sunscreen all over the right side of my face. Left side, still nothing on my skin. Compare it side to side. This side with the super group around my eyes, the Polish Choice on this half of my face. This side just looks a little bit more evened out. The tone is more consistent, it's more balanced. This is using two layers. This is more than I normally wear. That's why a tinted sunscreen will last me significantly longer than a untinted sunscreen will. I also never use tinted sunscreens on my neck or my chest because I wear clothes. I have necklines on my clothes. So I find products that are tinted tend to kind of smear on my clothing and I don't wanna mess up my clothing. So I only use untinted sunscreens that don't transfer onto clothing on my body. So I'm gonna even out this side of my face and I'll be right back. Alrighty, so now I have my tinted sunscreen face on and that is gonna be that. What do you think? Let me know down below. What do you think of having tinted sunscreen versus a foundation product or an untinted sunscreen? Do you notice the difference between with and without? Or are you someone who likes to add a tinted sunscreen under your foundation product for that extra boost of coverage? What's your preference? Let me know in the comments down below. Also, if you enjoyed this video, make sure you give it a thumbs up, subscribe to my channel if you haven't already, and share it with a friend who might need a little help finding their perfect tinted sunscreen. If there is a tinted sunscreen that you've tried that I didn't mention here today, let me know down below in the comments because I am always looking for a good tinted sunscreen for someone like me with fair skin that too many, as you saw, pull orange. So I will see you all in the next video. I hope you have a great rest of the day wherever you are in the world. Bye y'all.